So, so far so good. Uh, the market's holding on pretty much um, all of its gain. Uh, we haven't seen too much of volatility hit the screens uh, in conversation with Mr. Tulsian and Amrish Balika. Mr. Tulsian, uh, what would the advice be on uh, IT and in specific this profit taking that's set in on TCS? I mean, I know it's a huge stock, it's rallied so much. So maybe just profit taking, but very consistent selling. Uh, and today, I just want to get your thoughts on how uh, indecisive NASCOM seem to, seem to sound by not even putting out a guidance. The companies have sounded far more optimistic in the earnings call. That's right, Surabhi. And in fact, probably, you know, this TCS and Infosys is more seen as an as a, as a index management play. And we all know that for last 7 to 10 days, the indexes seem to be going weak. They Both the stocks have the presence in Nifty and Sensex. And that's a reason, in fact, the weakness may be in the form of the profit booking, largely by the FIs are seeing selling. But we are keeping positive on the mid-cap IT stocks purely on the valuations and you are right that the companies are seen to be quite optimistic than the than the trade body in NASCOM you know and if you really take a call that's what I've said in the morning also that yes the many of the stocks are seen to be ruling at a very low valuations whether you, you take the benchmark of the sector or of the of the of the nifty or sensex in fact many of them are ruling anywhere between T multiple of 12 13 to about maybe 16 17 which are seen quite good when they have the earnings visibility on in terms of top line growth of about 12, 13, 14 percent and earning, earning growth, uh, bottom line earning growth of about 15, 16 percent. And in that space or maybe if, if, you, if you want to play on that theme, probably you know many of the stocks are seen to be quite good like Tata, LXC, Hexaware, LNT, Infotech, LNT Techno, Technology Services, Mindtree or maybe Tech Mindra kind of stocks. Okay, but uh, Amrish, uh, your, your thoughts on a stock like uh, Excide, uh, today was very in interesting because it slipped below 200 at one point. And from there, it's been a, a bit of a rally. 52-week hmm. uh, low for the stock, though. I think it's a good time to pick up stocks like Excite because whatever said and done, uh, the replacement market is huge and it is growing. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons for Excite to underperform was the way Amaraja performed uh, in the battery market. I'm not talk talking about the stock market. Stock market also it performed extremely well in the last three or four years. But it's been gaining market share in the replacement market as well as OEM. Mm -hmm. But whatever said and done, the overall market is growing at a at a, such a fast pace, uh, and especially the replacement market because most of the batteries come for replacement at the end of uh, three or four years, and uh, that's what we should be seeing now. So I think it's a good opportunity because the markets are down because of which Excel also has come down. So I think it's a good opportunity to pick up a stock like this for a slightly longer term. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Mr. Tulsian, I was asking you about ADAG. Uh, I, is there any point in taking a stock call now, say on uh, Reliance Infra and Reliance Capital? The rest are pretty much uh, now penny stocks, but uh, Infra and Capital? See, Anuj, in fact, I have been saying this maybe for last 10 days that except for Reliance Nippon Asset Management, and there can be, I, I just take a different view apart from fundamentals. I'll come on a little later on that. If you see Reliance Nippon Asset Management, probably the only stock which is not seen in the f and space. And because of that, the, the hammering or the short selling is not seen happening there. And in fact, in Reliance Nippon Asset Management, both the promoters, that is Nippon Life and Reliance Capital is holding 43% stake. Where the, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is inevitable or it, it will be, Reliance Capital will be forced to monetize their 43% stake in the company, which can fetch them about four, four and a half thousand crore. So except for that, I don't see any value. And if you really take a call, in fact, the media reports, in fact, if you all see the reports on, on, on the group for last three years, they have all been deceiving and misleading. In fact, maybe since the time they have been announcing that they will monetize the towers by selling it to Brookfield for 22,000 crore, then about 18, 20 months back asking for a moratorium from the lenders under the SDR package and all sort of things. And I have always been apprehensive since then for last three years. And in fact, more the delay process will happen. It will spoil the valuation of the, all the companies more. And in fact, again, the media reports on our power that the promoters are looking to monetize their 18-20% stake for two and a half thousand crore. You know, again, I'm just going by the print media reports. It seem to be kite flying because when you have the entire company market cap of 3,000 crore and the enterprise value of closure to about 35,000 crore with the operational assets of 6,000 megawatt, I don't understand where can you, how can you fetch this kind of valuation. So if you take a call on Reliance Capital, Reliance Infra, Reliance Communication, Reliance Power. In fact, I'm 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 negative on all purely on fundamentals. But yes, the retail traders and punters they do enjoy in trading them, and you know they burn their fingers. So my clear advice: 
which I have been in fact saying for last two, three years that remain away because the fundamentals are seen to be sinking every day. No resolution process is seen happening and the debt is seen mounting on the group, which is seen to be a big uh, cause of concern. Mm -hmm. That's the ADAG pack. Uh, by the way, today is a day for uh, some hallowed stocks to lose even more ground. Page Industries is what I'm talking about. Four and a half percent fresh lows on that counter. The derating story just goes on and on. Page is still down days lows and absolutely no buyers coming in. The other one, of course, as we pointed out, is Jubilant Foodworks. There's pressure on that stock as well. Three and a half percent lower. Uh, however, one stock where at least right now there is some green is Ashok Leyland. Uh, Mr. Tulsin, before we let you go today, I mean, uh, I, I don't know if you managed to hear some of the management commentary. We, we were talking to them today. Uh, did it sound convincing? Because they're still saying that, you know, about uh, 15%, 15 to 18 percent growth is possible for the industry and maybe Leyland does even better. Uh, would you look at uh, buying the stock now? See, Surabhi, even I've heard CFO, you know, and I fully agree. And in fact, this is what we have been saying for the last couple of weeks. That if you take the calendar year 2019, I think that seems to be quite positive for the for the for the Ashok Leyland because we have already seen the two positive things happened till now. Maybe in this one and a half months. Firstly, the better monthly sales numbers in the month of January and the better Q3 numbers where the margins have seen you know moving into the double digit 10 percent plus. And now the I have heard the CFO saying that the migration of the or the replacement of the CEO is seen happening because Dhirad and Hinduja is holding the executive charge. And I don't think that in such a big companies, you know, the things should be taken so, so, so negatively where the things doesn't revolve everything around CEO. And now coming on the migration to BS6, you know, which will happen from 1st April 2020. Prior to that, maybe in Q3 and Q4 of FY20, we will be seeing the pre-BS6 migration buying happening. That has always been the case in the past also. So I think it is right now essential to focus only on FY20. No need to, to, to worry and apprehend on the on the downs, uh, downside or maybe tapering of the growth for FY21. Because FY20, if we continue to see the sales figures, what we have seen for the month of January, are going to improve further going forward because of the softness or, or the petrol diesel prices having stabilized, the financing facilities now seen available. So we are, and, and, and on top of it, the stocks seem to have bottomed out. Even maybe technically it is seen oversold under owned kind of thing. So yes, we are keeping extremely positive view and won't be surprised to see the share moving to the triple digit in the calendar year 2019. All right, Mr. Sen, thanks a lot for your time today. It was good talking to you. We'll, of course, uh, talk to you tomorrow now. Uh, for now, <coughs> by the way, look at Hevels. Uh, remember, we were discussing this talk yesterday, uh, the way it uh, fell yesterday, and perhaps uh, uh, that was a decent buying opportunity. And look at the way that stock has bounced back, back to those zones, in fact, higher than that. Uh, Amrish, the other stock, uh, which has rallied, which you've liked, is Praj uh, over the last uh, few days. Uh, uh, sugar has also rallied. That's also right. something that you liked. Uh, temptation to take profit here or you want to run this? No, I mean, uh, see, in a market like this, whichever stock you we talk about, uh, whenever there's a decent rally, mm -hmm. I think one should take some profits home because uh, this is not a market uh, which is a trending market. So if you have bought 100, I think it's always prudent to book at least 25, 30% mm -hmm. at a decent move. Because, I mean, it's very much possible the probability is quite high that the same stock you may get back 10% lower or 12% lower. Mm -hmm. But in case, it's, I mean, it continues moving up, then you're lucky you have you still have 70% uh, more. But uh, clearly, this is this not being a trending market, I think this is a rule which, is, which I think you should apply across. I mean, there's nothing called investment right now. Mm -hmm. It has to be investment plus a bit of trading. Okay, investment plus a bit of trading. Uh, Amrish Tehon will have a couple of more questions for you. Uh, Sandeep Shah is also joining us now, Associate Director at Motilal Oswal Private Wealth Management. Uh, Sandeep, hi, good afternoon. Uh, so, you know, uh, interesting because uh, the market has gone through a uh, mid-cap capitulation. It's just some bit of stability coming back into the mid-caps. Uh, uh, do, you, do, you, do you reckon uh, the worst of the price damage is out of the way? Um, you, you, well, yes, um, the, you know, the mid caps have been falling on extremely thin or perhaps even uh, very little volume. So in that sense, the prices are not really representative, uh, which, but, but then that in any case tends to happen in mid caps. And in fact, the last time I was on your show, I had mentioned that the Nifty target of 11,000 to 11,200 and we've corrected exactly from the midpoint of that range, eight days in a trot. And I think uh, you know, the broad, the Nifty has also, I think, broadly taken support at my initial target of 10,400 to 600. Um, I had mentioned the last time I was on your show that while I found mid caps and small caps attractive even then, and we've seen a collapse, 
uh, post that as well. I mentioned that outperformance may happen only post budget, I mean, uh, post the election outcome. And uh, to that extent, uh, I think I would change my stance given the further sell offs in uh, small and mid caps that I think um, those who are brave hearted, I think, should certainly begin buying now. You can scale in your purchases. Uh, this is something that I, I maintained last time as well. I think you can scale in your purchase from now till the election outcome. Uh, and the reason that it's important to start buying now and not wait. Uh, is, is for two reasons. One is investor behavior and, uh, uh, and investor psychology. Uh, uh, the, the point is that even if we have a negative election outcome uh, and there is a knee-jerk reaction, markets will most certainly do well post that as we are aware of. And it's unlikely that investors will, be, will end up buying it during that sell-off or that knee-jerk reaction if it happens. Uh, what, is, what, is, what is on the other hand is possible is that the market already prices it, the election outcome. And post elections, we see a rally. So therefore, the time to buy is now. Uh, at the same point of time, we have four or five months till the election outcome. Uh, so we can actually scale in our purchases uh, in that. So yes, um, I'm now saying that even though uh, outperformance may take a little while, clearly we should be buying now. Okay, that's interesting. But uh, uh, you know that buying call, uh, does it extend to sectors like, let's say, auto as well because that's where there's so much of gloom and doom talk still going around we were just discussing ashok leland before you joined in uh, or a stock like you know a franchise like aisha maruti are these good levels or do you think there's still several months of pain in terms of demand and therefore maybe even stock price action so in fact the last time i was on your show i told you that i would not buy auto now and i would actually wait to buy uh, but I, and, and auto stocks have corrected since then for good reason, as you've mentioned that some of those companies have disappointed on the volume numbers. And it's not just, and it's no longer company specific disappointment. I think uh, across the board, whether it's two wheelers, four wheelers or commercial vehicles, there is a clear slowdown and very palpable. And it's also feeding in through the system in terms of affecting auto ancillaries and so on and so forth. And uh, while part of the reason has been higher prices of some of the products due to various, various reasons, uh, and also to some extent lack of funding which is happening uh, for purchases, especially where the smaller NBFCs are associated with. Having said that, I think further corrections from here, I think should be a buying opportunity. I think, um, you know, the chairman of, a, of one of the largest four-wheeler companies actually mentioned that uh, we tend to see pre-elections, we tend to see a slowdown pre-general elections and, and a surge in volumes pose that. While the logic is not entirely very clear, but uh, it does suggest that in, in general there is a softening of uh, confidence and there is a general a, a postponement of decisions pre-elections, whether it's businessmen and therefore uh, affecting consumers as well. So yes, there is, there is a buying opportunity which is going to come in auto in the next three to six months and we should be looking uh, at further corrections to buy some of the top quality names, uh, you know, leaders in either their individual spaces or leaders in uh, the overall segment as a whole. Okay, p p fair enough. Uh, what about some of these, uh, p you know, p haloed consumption names which are correcting? Uh, you know, Page Industries, for example, is now down 40%. Some would argue still expensive. In fact, uh, p you, you know, you can't even argue it. It is still expensive. Uh, uh, you know, you have uh, Jubilant Foodworks, which has corrected from its peak. On the other hand, there's a Bata, which is still making new highs. Uh, uh, but there, the earnings were really spectacular. Uh, but uh, overall thoughts on, on, on this space? So, you know, there has been a lot of uh, pain in individual companies um, and I think individual traders as well as uh, investors have got hurt. And I think what tends to happen is that as the market correction continues, and, and I'm not talking about the headline nifty here, I'm really talking about the broad market. Uh, and as the correction there continues, I think investors start taking profits in other companies as well because you know, a lot of the small and mid caps, it's very difficult to sell today. I mean, and it, and it probably doesn't make any sense because, you know, the prices are not even representative, have, have absolutely no correlation in some cases with the underlying value, simply because they're, they're down on, on just because of, of, of very small volume. So, so therefore, I'm not surprised that on, on a little bit of bad news, you've seen, you know, fairly sharp correction in some of stocks which have been holding up very well and have been doing well. I would, of course, like to highlight here that, you know, when we look at 
P multiples of you know growth companies. I think it's also important to look at the longevity of growth, and that's something that a lot of investors find it difficult to factor into their assumptions. You know, some of the very high P stocks, uh, while they have uh, what looks like you know reasonable growth at 20, 30 percent. Perhaps the runway of growth is so long, which is why the multiples tend to be higher. But yes, I'm not surprised uh, at, at the correction. And I think that you could see individually some of these stocks continue to correct. But then the good news is that as the market correction draws towards its final legs, it's, it's, the, it's the quality stocks, it's the leaders of the, of the market so far, which correct last. So therefore, um, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a welcome sign. Okay, uh, so just get, getting back to the point specifically on consumption, uh, Sandeep, how are you cutting the basket? Because I mean, there is something like Page that continues to get derated, as Anuj pointed out, Bata is still finding takers. Within Staples also, it's such a mixed basket. I mean, uh, Lever, for instance, doing much better than a Godrej consumer last three, four uh, months. Uh, Godrej consumer has come off quite significantly from the highs as well. So now, how do you cut the pie? So clearly, I think um, it, uh, while you know broad cut uh, consumer stock valuations are on the higher side, uh, again here again the longevity of growth for some of these companies seems quite high. And uh, to be very honest, I think it's also a fact that there aren't that many quality businesses which are growing which you can buy. Uh, that tends to put a higher premium on some of these consumer stocks. Um, as far as FMCG is concerned, I think I would continue to be positive here. Clearly, there will be differences in performance based on which companies are gaining market share, which companies are losing market share, which companies are more domestic focused, which companies have more of an international business, which could be more volatile. So I think we'll have to incorporate that and you know, you can't paint everything with the same brush because uh, at any point of time, there are always companies which are gaining market share. But I think the volume growth of most of the FMCG companies has been very good. And I don't think we can complain about that at all. Uh, perhaps on the margin side, we could have, but as long as there is strong volume growth and you know, with the uh, spending that political parties are likely to do ahead of the elections, you will see more money in the hands of uh, uh, you know, the, the, the lower strata of society. And I think, so FMCG companies, uh, volume growth, I think can, should continue to remain fairly good. So I would, I would continue to be bullish on them. Uh, at the same point of time, highlighting that returns may be fairly modest. Uh, on the discretionary consumption side uh, is actually where there has been a lot more pain. We've seen that in consumer durables. Um, in, uh, you know, what is also happening is that some of these companies have re-engineered their business models. So there are some companies which are doing very well today, but you know, th those companies weren't doing so well two, three years back. So uh, ideally from an investor's perspective, what you really want to buy is a business which you know can continue to grow very well for the next five, seven years and longer, and not just uh, uh, businesses which you know keep changing their strategy every two, three years, and sometimes they get it right, and sometimes they falter. And uh, you're, uh, you know, uh, hoping that every time that things falter that they will change their strategy and do that. You don't really want to buy those businesses. You want to buy those businesses which companies have been doing, have, 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 have capable management, a proven business model, and have delivered consistent performance. Uh, we can live with, you know, uh, shorter periods of uh, subpar growth as long as, uh, you know, the longer term trajectory is very clear. So you've sure. got to be careful there because, uh, 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 Worth highlighting again, there are companies which do well for two, three years, fall by the wayside, okay. again need to rechange their strategy, again come back, sometimes mm. they don't. Okay. And you, as an investor, you could be left holding the bag. Okay, Sandeep, uh, we, we leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us uh, uh, and uh, giving your opinion. By the way, look at the market. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a uh, big rally out there, uh, you know, 115 point nifty move right now, Surabhi. And, uh, we were uh, 55 points higher when we opened out exactly. the show, Anuj, and 115 now. Yes. This has been nothing short of, I mean, as stunning was the decline in the last 30-40 uh, minutes yesterday, I think it's, it's the I reversal it's, playing out today. Yeah, I think what perhaps has happened is that uh, uh, there was a bit of a view that uh, the same would play out, like today also. <laughs> And the market decided to do a complete reverse of that. And just look at some of these stocks move. Uh, uh, Infosys, uh, mm. ICICI Bank, HCL Tech. Uh, uh, a lot of this is, in fact, IT driven. HTFC, the big boy, is making a move. Just pull out that stock. Uh, uh, well, we were getting used to Wednesday volatility on the bank nifty. 
Amrish looks like we'll have to get used to this on the Nifty as well. This weekly options expiry and this Wednesday move yeah. is going to get really interesting now. For, for no, that's true. But again, uh, let us not really get too excited about no, no, this. No, I'm not. Move. I'm yeah. just saying yeah. that yeah. you know, yeah. like uh, like you saw the decline mm. yesterday. Yeah. Today you've seen the, the big rally because play out. we need to see that this move sustains at least for a few days. Then at least we can say that yes, mm. things are looking better than what it was in the last few days. Because after an eight-day fall, mm. a decent bounce back. Uh, I mean, uh, sure. like, like, like for a day is more than expected then. No, absolutely. Some of those shots will at some point take some profit home. In fact, if uh, if we have Ashwini with us, Ashwini, just on the index, now that this is not following yesterday's pattern, uh, what should the advice be for intraday shots? Uh, is it time to square them off? Uh, on the other hand, would you look at sort of maybe carrying them forward over to tomorrow if you think this is just a temporary bounce? I don't think this could be a temporary bounce because you are trading at the highs of the day after a 10-day decline. So uh, it may not go back to 11,000, but uh, given the number of shots there are, uh, chances are you could easily do uh, you know 10,850 before we take the next move because uh, uh, by the end of the day. I think you are seeing a fair amount of short covering, possibly some out of buying also. So my sense is don't carry shorts, whether you go long or not, uh, that's a matter of personal choice. But I would think that uh, at least a retest of Nifty from the downside, uh, 10,850, 10,900, that is a possibility.